All right, so we're going to be going over a couple of questions out of uh, workbook number two for unit A here, um, starting with question number seven. So it says the burning of 25.6 grams of glucose can cause 800 milliliters of calorimeter water to increase in temperature from 21.9 to 76.9 degrees Celsius. How much heat was gained by the calorimeter water? Okay, so basically the thing you want to pay attention to always is um, like kind of how the calorimeter is set up. So essentially with this one, it says that burning 25.6 grams of glucose can cause 800 milliliters of calorimeter water to increase in temperature from 21.9 to 76.9 degrees. How much heat was gained by the calorimeter? So basically looking for like the Q value. Um, so just keep in mind, like, Q equals MC delta T, which is pretty straightforward, right? So this is what we're looking for. We have two masses here, so this is probably the trickiest part of the question. We have 25.6 grams of glucose, and it's causing this much water to increase in temperature. So if you have this kind of separate thing where it's not, like, this is not part of a solution um, where you're measuring... Um, the temperature change. So it's just burning this, releases enough energy to heat this mass up, um, you know, by this amount. So you want to make sure you only use the mass of the water because that's the only thing that has this temperature change in it. Okay, so basically we just do the mass, which is going to be, remember that um, each milliliter is the equivalent of a gram when you're dealing with water or dilute solutions. So we basically have 800 milliliters, which is 800 grams um, of calorimeter of water to increase in temperature from 21.9 to 76.9. So delta T is going to be 76.9 minus 21.9, which gives us 55 degree um, Celsius temperature change. And C for water is um, 4.19 and then all those units, but I'm not going to write that out. So with this one, it's basically just straightforward. Multiply 4.19 times 800 times by 55, and you should end up with um, 18, or sorry, how do I say that? 184, 184,360 joules, right? Because those are our units that we get with our C value. So then you just have to be careful because the answer is in kilojoules. So we know that there are, um, there's one kilojoule for every thousand joules. So just using our conversion factor there to cancel out joules and be left with kilojoules, which leaves us with an answer of 184.36, but we round to the nearest whole number because we have three sig digs. So um, you should end up with answer B there. Okay, uh, the next question to look at is number nine. So when we have one gram of sodium reacting with oxygen, according to the following reaction, 901 kilojoules of heat are released. So, but we want to know what the enthalpy change for the reaction as it's written is. So in this reaction, there's four moles of sodium. But we were told that we had one gram of sodium, which is, you know, we have to figure out how many moles that is, and one gram releases 901 kilojoules. So from this information, we can start to figure out how many kilojoules per mole are released, and then we can associate that with the four. So the first step of this is always to figure out your kilojoules per mole. Um, and remember, in order to get from mass, um, well, in order to solve for kilojoules per moles, we need moles, so we can't leave this as grams. So we want to do one gram of sodium times by, for every one mole of sodium, it weighs 22.99 grams. So you just pull that off of your periodic table. Um, and so the answer for that is 0.0434, some kind of an extended decimal there for the number of moles. And again, just think if that makes sense, one gram is quite a bit less than 23, so it makes sense that we have quite a bit less than one mole there. So basically when we re have this many moles, we release 901 kilojoules. So we can calculate our kilojoules by moles. Remember that basically this unit actually tells us what our math is. We just have to take the number of kilojoules that we have and the number of moles that we have that are associated with that and divide them. So we had 901 kilojoules 
released when we burn 0.04, or sorry, when we, well, yeah, burn, react with oxygen 0.434 mole, right? So kilojoules per mole. And when we do that math, we should end up with 20,713.989, again, extended decimal, kilojoules per mole. Okay, now if this is how many kilojoules are released per mole, that's for one mole. And in this reaction, we have four moles of sodium. So we need to multiply this whole thing by four moles of Na. And that's going to give us, let's see, 82,855.95 kilojoules. Okay, so um, here you can see that these answers are all in megajoules. So if you want to do that conversion, just remember um, you always have this available to you in your data booklet, those conversions. So the difference between kilo and mega is kind of the same as like between the base units. So it's a difference of a thousand. So basically what I would say here is, I'm just going to get rid of that so I can finish this off. So times by, oh, <laughs> never mind. I'm messing up where I was, so I can multiply that down there. So for every, um, I want to figure out how many megajoules per kilojoule, and I want the kilojoules to cancel out, so I want them on the bottom. Now, because a megajoule is bigger, there's one megajoule for every 1,000 kilojoules, right? Because it goes from 10 to the power of 3 to 10 to the power of 6. And so um, 82,000 basically divided by 1,000 gives us 82.9, I think is what we rounded to, megajoules. And so if we look here, that's going to be our answer there. Um, if you would have had to choose between negative and positive, just remember at the end, um, you have to think about what's happening here. So because heat is released, that means that whenever energy is moving out of the system, it's negative with relation to the system. So if you had to choose between negative and positive, just make sure that you would look at the whether it was released or absorbed. Okay. Um, the next one we're going to look at is question 10. So in this one, we have 13 grams of... Um, Ethane is, or sorry, actually that's ethene, is completely burned in a calorimeter according to the equation, uh, this equation, right? And they give us the energy as a product, so we know that energy is released. And then we have the mass of water and the temperature, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is we're looking for what the final temperature of the system is going to be, right? We have the mass of the water, and again, we're set up in this situation where the mass of water changes by a certain um, temperature, right? So it starts at 20. We need to figure out what the final is. So basically, we're looking at delta T, right? And then from that, we can solve for final temperature. Um, we have mass equals 4 kilograms, so basically 4,000 grams. Um, and then the other thing we have here is the mass of ethene. Now remember, um, oh, sorry, and actually, we're talking about water changing, so C equals 4.19. And let me just think here if we need to worry about anything else. Oh, and we have our Q value here, so Q. Now, the only thing we need to figure out here is this value here is going to be equal to, or sorry, this is like our delta H, is for two moles of um, ethene. We only have 13 grams, so we need to figure out how many moles that is and how that relates to this um, component here. So we have delta H is uh, negative 25, 1, 2 kilojoules. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is figure out my moles of this. So 13 grams times by um, molar mass of ethene is, for every one mole, we have 26.04 grams. Okay, um, and so that should give us 0 0.499 moles. 
that's an extended decimal there. Um, just keep in mind, so always check in. Let me see if that makes sense. So we have about a half a mole. One mole is 26 grams. We have 13. So yeah, that seems right, half of a mole. So we have 0.499 moles um, is how much we have in total. What we know here is that if we have... Um, we have 25, 12 kilojoules for two moles. So we want to know how many kilojoules is that per mole. So um, basically what we would do is 25, 1, 2 kilojoules are released for every two moles. Two moles. So if we divide that in half, we basically get... Um, what was my number of value there? One, two, five, six kilojoules per mole. Okay, so this is how much is being released per mole. We have a half a mole, so we're going to expect to have, um, you know, like around maybe 700 or so. So, but let's double check. So this is how many moles we have. We want to figure out. Um, we want to figure out our delta H for this for this amount, right? Because this was for the, the whole equation as it was written. So instead, I shouldn't have even actually put that down in my list here, because this is actually what we wanted to solve for. Um, so instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my kilojoules per mole as a conversion factor. So if I want kilojoules in the end, it has to be on top. One, two, five, six kilojoules per mole. And so this cancels out my number of moles, and I'm left with um, 627.035. So exactly kind of what we we're expecting, somewhere between 6 and 700. OK, so that's how many kilojoules we have. Now just remember, if we're going to use this C value, we have to be using joules. So we just want to go in really quickly and um, there's a thousand joules per kil per kilojoule, thousand joules per kilojoule. So basically, now we can say 627 times by a thousand is going to give us 627,035.33 joules. Okay. So now we can say, if we want to solve for our delta T, we can say. Um, this translate to a Q value for the calorimeter, so Q equals MC delta T. If we want to rearrange for delta T, we have to divide out the M and the C. So Q over MC is going to be our delta T. Um, so basically, we take this value and divide it by 4,000 times by 4.19. And so when you do that, you should get um, 37.412. Degrees Celsius. Now, just keep in mind this is just our change in temperature, and what we're actually looking for is the final temperature. So, um, basically, change in temperature equals final minus initial. So, if we want to solve, we have the initial temperature here is 20 degrees. So, we want to isolate TF, so we need to add TI to the other side. So, we're going to have delta T plus Ti is equal to Tf. So delta T is 37.4 plus our initial temperature was 20. And that's going to be 57.4 um, degrees Celsius. So if we look here, we can see that that's going to be answer B. Okay, so quite a few steps in there, just making sure that you're aware uh, kind of like of where everything is, like you really need to be thinking about what's going on in the calorimeter, right? So when mostly what I would expect to happen in this question is that you would know you have mass, you have some version of temperature, so you're going to be looking for delta T because we should know by now that we can use this, you know, to solve for final or initial if we need to. Um, and C is always like a given. So if you had M and C and you're looking for delta T, you should have known that you needed to solve for some kind of version of um, the Q value in the calorimeter. And we can do that by using the energy of the overall reaction. 
but remember you always need to break it down to the energy per mole of the substance that you're working with and then if you have that set amount then you need to make sure that you're calculating the energy that's released for that amount right in order to cause this temperature change um, okay so that's question 10 and last question we're going to look at is question 13 um, so in this one it says a 5 gram sample of sausage was burned in a calorimeter. The heat given off raised the temperature of 600 grams of water in the calorimeter from 25 to 38.5. Calculate the energy that could be obtained from 40 grams of sausage. Okay, so obviously with, like we have a piece of sausage, we don't know what the chemical composition is of that. So you're not going to be looking for moles or anything. You just know that these are the masses and that you have a ratio, right? So the basically like the energy you can calculate is from five grams but the energy that you want to figure out is for eight times that value right eight times five it gives you 40. so essentially you can use this five gram sample the information from there but then in order to calculate the energy that would be obtained from a 40 gram sausage you need to multiply that by eight so this is very similar to question seven that we did in the sense that again you're not really worried about what's going on with the mass of sausage you just need to know what happens to the water in the calorimeter how does that change and then you can make inferences from that so basically we would again say q equals mc delta t and we are given our mass was 600 grams um, C is always our given, 4.19, and then we had a change in temperature of 38.5 minus 25, which gives us um, 13 and a half degrees Celsius. Okay, so basically Q is going to be equal to um, M times C times delta T. So if you multiply those together, you should get 33,939. Um, and remember, because of your C value, that's going to be in joules. Okay. Um, and so basically what I would think of here is this is I'm gonna wait with my conversion until I'm finished with this so basically what I would do because you could convert to like kilojoules here but if you look at the answers it could be kilojoules it could be megajoules so I'm just gonna wait until I get my final answer so what I would think of here now is this is how many joules I have for five grams there's multiple different ways you can think of this, but um, I basically set it up as an equivalent fraction. So what I want to know is how much energy will there be for 40 grams? Um, so basically that's what I'm looking for, how many joules for 40 grams. So with equivalent fractions, you just need to think, well, how do I get from 5 to 40? Well, I multiply by 8, and whatever I do to one, I have to do to the other. So I'm doing that to the top and the bottom. Oops. <laughs> I totally reversed that totally, but um, so basically 33,939 times by 8 gives us um, 2715, sorry guys, actually when I did my first calculations, eh? let me just see here. We go times like two seven one five one two joules, and then if I want to, so here you can probably just tell, right? You don't really need to um, do the conversion, but basically you would just divide it by a thousand to get your number of kilojoules, which is going to be two hundred and seventy-two. Okay, um, so hopefully that helped you guys out. Um, if you have any other questions, you can always let me know. Hello, Chem 30 students. So today I'm going to do a review of some of these workbook questions that I was requested. Um, so we're going to start out, um, this is for workbook 2 of unit A. We're going to be doing questions 7, 9, 10, and 13. Um, so for question 7 here, starting out, burning 25.6 grams of glucose can cause 800 milliliters of calorimeter water to increase in temperature from 21.9 to 76.9 degrees Celsius. How much much heat was gained by the calorimeter water. So the important thing to be aware of in this one is that we 
have a mass of something that's burning, but the thing that we're concerned about is the energy change that results in the water. So um, basically we want to think about what variables we were given. We're given the mass of the substance is 25.6 grams. Um, we have 800 milliliters of calorimeter water. Now, just keep in mind, usually when we're doing these calorimetry questions, we want to convert the volume into mass. So for every milliliter, we have one gram. Um, so it's a one-to-one -one conversion. So basically, we can also say we have a mass of 800 grams of water. Um, and then again, if we're dealing with water, that means we also know the C value, which is 4.19. And I'm not going to put in all those units this time. And then we have an increase in temperature. So basically, we have delta T is equal to um, 76.9 minus 21.9, which is 55 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's our change in temperature. We're looking for how much heat was gained by the calorimeter water. So essentially, we're looking for the Q value of um, that. And you can see from our variables that we're going to be dealing with MC delta T as our formula here. The only thing that you just have to be careful with is understanding that because we have the mass of water and the temperature change that corresponds with that, and we have no information about like how much energy is released from this other than this information about the changes in the water, we don't need to worry about this mass of glucose, okay? Um, because we don't have like a reaction with the delta H or anything like that, so we can't really correlate that. So all we really need to think of is the burning of this, it doesn't matter really what the mass is because all we care about is how much heat overall was gained by the calorimeter water. So we can determine that by using its mass, its specific heat um, capacity, and the temperature that it changed by. So basically, if you just multiply 800 times by 4.19 times by 55, um, you should get... Uh, 184,360. And keep in mind, because your C value is joules there, all of your answers are in kilojoules, so you would have to multiply it by your conversion factor. So for every 1,000 joules, there's one kilojoule. And um, so basically, that leaves us with 184 kilojoules. OK, so that would be answer B. Um, question number nine is a little bit different. So we have when one gram of sodium reacts with oxygen according to this reaction, this much heat is released. And we want to figure out the enthalpy change for the reaction as it's written. So the important thing to be aware of here is that we're given a mass, which we always need to kind of think of is going to be an equivalent number of moles, right? And we're given the amount of energy that's released for that quantity. So if we want to know what the enthalpy change for the reaction as written is, where we have four moles of sodium, not, you know, one gram, which is however many moles, the first thing we need to figure out is, uh, like, what is the energy release per mole? And then we can, like, multiply that to suit the number of moles that we see in the reaction. So essentially, all we need to know is how many kilojoules are being released per mole to start out with. So in this case, the like the units you're looking for actually tell you what the math is. You're trying to figure out how many kilojoules are released per mole of sodium. And so those units tell you you need to take the number of kilojoules you have, which is 901, and divide it by the number of moles you have, which is, we haven't determined that yet, right? So um, the first thing we should do is figure out how many moles that is. So if we have one gram of sodium, for every one mole, there's 22.99 grams. And so 1 divided by 22.99 gives us 0 0.043 something moles. So we, and that makes sense, right? So if we have 23 grams is one mole, if we only have one gram, we're going to have quite a bit less than one um, mole. So that's what we see here. So now we can solve for how many kilojoules are released per mole by saying, well, there's 901 kilojoules 
oops, killer joules, released when we burn or react with oxygen 0 0.043 moles. Um, and so that tells us that, let's see, 20,713.989 kilojoules are released for every mole, which makes sense, right? If we have 900 kilojoules being released for less than one, um, then we're going to have quite a bit more released for a whole mole. Okay, so we have 20,000 per mole. Now the only thing we need to think about is how many moles are, because we're looking for the enthalpy change for the reaction as it's written. And so as it's written, there's four moles of sodium. So if this is how much kilojoules there are for one mole, we need to multiply it by four moles, right? And we can double check that the math we're doing here makes sense because the moles are gonna cancel out if you multiply. Um, and so we end up with kilojoules. So we end up with um, 82,855.95 kilojoules. Oops. Can't quite fit that on the paper there. Um, 82, right? Um, and then in here, we can see that all of our answers are listed in megajoules. So if we wanted to do that conversion, I mean, it's probably going to be obvious, right, that it's 82. Um, but if you are not comfortable with this conversion, you should make sure that you are. Um, so kilo is 10 to the 3 and mega is 10 to the 6. So basically, it's a thousand times more. So you would say, k 82,855.95 kilojoules. And then it's kind of up to you how you would want to do it. You could do um, you could use like the exponents. For me, I just like to think, I know I'm up a thousand. So I would say for every one megajoule, there's a thousand kilojoules. Just the same way there's a thousand joules in every, like in every kilojoule, right? So we're going up one more level. So basically 82,000 divided by a thousand gives us 82 point. And then yeah, if we round this eight to nine, we have 82.9 megajoules. Um, and of course, because the heat is being released, it has to be a negative value, okay? Because that energy is leaving the system. Okay, and this next one we have, actually this one I might, um, this one has quite a few calculations, so I might grab a blank piece of paper a second here, so that you guys aren't totally lost as I try to fill it in <laughs> around this stuff. Okay, so we have 13 grams of um, ethene that's completely burned in a calorimeter according to this equation. So um, we have the calorimeter has a certain mass of water at a certain temperature. Assuming all the heat from this reaction is with this mass of ethene is transferred to the water, what would the final temperature of this system be? So we want to think about what we need. We're looking for the total temperature change of this water. Um, and we know that we have the mass, we have a part of the temperature, but basically we're looking for the temperature change. So we're looking for delta T equals question mark. Um, because it's water, we have the C value is 4.19, and we have the mass is four kilograms, which is 4,000 grams. Um, and we're trying to figure out how this temperature would change. So we know that with this formula, we're going to be looking at Q equals MC delta T, right? And we have M and C, but we're missing delta T, and we can't be missing two components because we also weren't given Q directly. So we can't be missing two components and solve for this one. So we know we need to figure out a value for Q. The way we can solve for that is by figuring out how much energy is leaving this reaction um, is going to be the same as like the Q value of the like the incoming energy, right? So basically, we want to look for delta H of this reaction. We're given delta H for the overall reaction, but keep in mind that this value here is representative of two moles. Okay, of the substance you're looking for. And we only have 13 grams. So kind of similar to the last question, we need to be able to determine how many moles do we actually have, right? And then um, like how much energy is that gonna be? So 
essentially what we need to have, just like in the last question, you're always looking for like kilojoules per mole and then trying to figure out how that relates to what you have. So in this case, because we're given the energy in the reaction, um, it's 25, 12 kilojoules for every two moles. So um, let me think we can solve for this by delta H is going to be equal to um, like we basically just need to solve for the kilojoules per mole and then the kilojoules that are released for the number of moles we have. So I'm not actually going to set this up like a formula. I'm just going to go, we can solve for this by saying, okay, there's 25, 12 joules of energy that are released for, or sorry, kilojoules for two moles. So essentially that means for every mole, 25, 12 divided by two gives us um, 1256 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so this is how much energy is released per mole. We need to know how many moles we have. So the other thing we need to do really quick here is 13 grams times by, for every one mole of C2H2, we are going to have a mass of 26.04 grams, which is going to give us 0 0.499 moles. Oops. Sorry, that's um, an extended decimal, so we should make sure we're keeping that in there. And that makes sense, right? It's um, We have about half of 26, so it makes sense we have a half a mole. So if this is how many moles we have, and this is how much energy is released per mole, we can solve for delta H, the number of kilojoules, by saying a half a mole times by one, two, five, six kilojoules per mole. We're going to expect to have about half the amount of kilojoules, right? So about 650 maybe. Um, no, not even because we're not even at 1300, so maybe 620 or so. Um, and we end up with 0.499 times 1256 gives us 627.035, so just like we expected. So that's the total number of kilojoules that are released according to this reaction for that mass of substance. So if this is how much energy we have, now we have a Q value, um, and we just need to rearrange this for delta T. So Q equals MC delta T. Um, we want to divide out MC out of both sides. So we have delta T is equal to Q, which is the 627.035 um, kilojoules, divided by mass. So remember, in this case, this is the energy that came into the system from this reaction. So that's why we're using that um, Q value. And then for our M and our C, we have to use this, the materials in the system. So basically the mass of the water, the 4,000 grams, and the C value, which is 4.19. Um, I'm not going to fill in all those units <laughs> like I never do. Okay, so that gives us a temperature change of um, 37.412. Degrees Celsius. Um, now the thing we were actually looking for here is what is the final temperature, right? So we're looking for Tf. We had to solve for delta T first, but now we can solve for Tf because we know that change in temperature is equal to the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So if we want to solve for Tf, we just have to move Ti to the other side by adding it. So we can say Tf equals delta T plus Ti, and our delta T was um, the 37.4 plus our initial temperature, which they said was 20, and so that gives us 57.4 degrees, which is answer B. Okay, um, okay number 13. We have a five gram sample. I might do the same thing here, just use this blank piece of paper. Five gram sample was burned in a calorimeter and the heat given off raised the temperature of 600 grams of water 
um, from 25 to 38.5. Calculate the energy that could be obtained from 40 grams of sausage. So first of all, we just want to figure out how much energy is obtained from this 5 gram. And then we know that we have, if we have like 8 times as much, right, 5 times 8 would give us 40, then we're going to have 8 times as much energy. So the energy will raise the same amount. So then we can figure that out. So the first thing we want to do is solve for how much energy comes from this 5 gram sample. Now this is basically just like um, the first question we looked at where the mass of our sample doesn't really matter and of course we know it can't matter because we don't have any chemical information about like molar mass of the sausage so basically all we need to think about is what's happening to the water because that will tell us the energy that's coming off of this reaction um, so we have the mass of the water 600 grams um, Obviously, we always have the C value, 4.19, and then our change in temperature is 38.5 minus 25, which is 13.5 um, degrees. Okay, so we can figure out how much energy came off of the sample by solving for Q, which is going to be 600 M times by C times by delta T, which is 13.5. And that gives us a value of um, 33,939. And keep in mind, because in our C value we have joules, that's going to be our value here. Okay. So now, um, and also if you're ever unsure, like I know I never write in the units, but partly the reason for that is because your units are always right here. So if you're ever unsure of what units you should expect out of a calculation where you use your C value, you can always just refer to this page in your data booklet and make sure like you know that you're always working with grams, joules, and degrees Celsius. Um, okay, so this is how many joules were released. Now, just keep in mind that moving forward from there, that was for 5 grams. So this is 33,939 joules per 5 grams. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You could divide this out right now to find the joules per gram and then multiply it by 40. Or you can set it equivalent fractions, which is what I did. So I, was, I said, like, how many joules per 40 grams? And then I would just look like, because you want to make the same units, right? So what do I do to get from 5 to 40? I have to multiply by 8. So then I have to do that to the top as well. So when I do 33,939 times by um, 8, I end up with 271,512 joules. Okay, um, so from here you can probably guess that it's going to be this one, but if you want you can multiply by your conversion factor of um, one, ki one kilojoule <laughs> per thousand joules. So we're going to end up with 271.5 or 272 kilojoules. So that would be answer D. Okay, so that's everything from there. Um, if you have more questions, let me know and I will post another video, but hopefully that helped you out.